Welcome to ATV TV. I'm Darren Dance here at Manning Tree Park and I'm zooming into Peter Morganti at the Penthouse in Ballarat. The G'day, Pete. The Penthouse. <laughs> yes, I've just had to organise, re reshuffle some kids and now I've got some quiet. Well, mate, it looks like uh, you've got your value out of your, your haircut this week. Yeah, got a bit off. Barley just calls me bald. So, <laughs> Dad, you're bald. bald. You're bald. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. So, how's life in uh, lockdown three there at Ballarat? Ah, uh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Back to home. Home school is going well. Yeah, and, and, and I say unfortunately, not for the wallet, but Bex had a little bit of part time work in the afternoon. Uh, sorry, uh, during the last couple of days. Homeschool has been forced my way a little bit, although Joan has been the the principal basically the last two days. So he's doing his own and helping Marley. So it's been all right. Yeah. Oop. Well, we should send his chip. We've got a bit of stopping and delaying here. Seems all right, mate. All right, now we're right. Yep. But anyway, we're surviving. Well, let's go through last week's runners, Pete. Yeah, we go back to Donald Darren. We had two runners, both ran well. Kick off with Sunbert, who uh, probably didn't go totally to what we expected. She led again, but uh, fought on well. Just the other two were probably just too strong in the end. Beating about a length. Pretty strong race. Pretty strong race there, I thought. Um, yeah, she wasn't supposed to lead. I know Matthew Williams was a bit disappointed she led. Um, look, uh, just after that run, she ran third. She held on well, beat the rest by... by some distance. And I think just looking at uh, her... So we pass that feedback back and hopefully that's what uh, they do next time. Yep. Anyway, she's found a bit of consistency in the last two runs, so uh, hopefully the win's not far away. Hasniaki, we were looking for improvement. Um, back in trip, which wasn't ideal, but thankfully Paul put her in this race because she would have missed a run in the 1600, and she was only beaten three quarters of a length, finishing third. Well, you think she's ready to win now, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Out to a mile, similar type track and race, and... Uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a, a, a win. Paul, I know Paul's uh, itching for that first ATB winner. <laughs> he was pretty happy to get a third. He said it was a PB. You didn't put the text up? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, fairly colourful. Yes. But, uh, anyway, I think he's always held faith with uh, Philly, but it was just a matter of getting the right conditions. And, uh, yeah, she's... Um, Certainly got a hoof on the till. Move forward to Sunday. Collectible. Fourth. I'd have a lot of ground again, Darren. She loves getting out the back. Mm. And I thought it was interesting, Pete. Um, she came out of the gate. To my eye, it looked like Jamie Mott held her back. And in the stewards' report, she said she was restrained early. Um, but when Jamie done his post race, he said she had no speed early. So I don't know who's got the right <laughs> end of that stick. But uh, to try and win from 12 lengths off him at the you know the back, she made a big run up to finish fourth. But you know, I, I think if she's not going to run a little bit closer, then she's just going to be flashing home late the whole time, and she's going to be a perennial place getter. So I'm hopeful that if he gets her out to a bit further. She can be a little bit more handy and uh, she might pick one up. 1,800 and draw a nice gate and she's got to be hard to beat. She's um, closing sectional has been good now for her last three runs, in fact. So, um, I think she carved out, she carved out a 10.6 during that race. So yeah, good going. That's pretty quick. And on rain, I mean, I say the track was an improving track the other day. But, yeah, look, she's ready to win. We just need that. Two elements you mentioned about being a bit closer and probably an extra couple of hundred metres wouldn't hurt her either. Exactly. Uh, move on to uh, Packenham Synthetic Tuesday. We had Whitemore and all the owners knew that this was uh, 
final throw at the stumps and uh, look at didn't pan out again. Tactics were to be a little bit closer than what he was and uh, he ran off fairly for sixth. Only beaten four lengths. Um, so that was his final run for ATB and the crew. He's, um, you can buy him tomorrow, Pete. You can bid up on uh, English Digital tomorrow and um, yep. you can buy him. He's unreserved. And I thought that run was a, was a good run actually to finish off over a mile four lengths, it means that someone will buy him. He'll probably end up in Queensland or Darwin or somewhere. And uh, someone will have a bit of fun with him. But he's just reached his mark here and he's racing okay without being brilliant. And, you know, it's time to move him on. Yeah, it was a benchmark 64. So it was probably his better best run for the last four or five. And, yeah, he looks the ideal type of North Queensland type of horse. Um. <laughs> went from synthetic to a bog. We went to Warrnambool yesterday and we had two horses run there and uh, Penthouse Just Park, heavy. You know, wasn't it heavy and they were really carving it up. So, um, yeah, most of the horses would have slept well last night, I'd say. We had Penthouse Playboy, his fourth run in for Pat Ryan. Finished sixth. He, he led up and then took a sit. And I, I, Look, I just think the conditions and out the 30, 100, even though from 24, it probably just took its tail a bit. It's probably yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. little bit, I was just going to say, at least. Um, I don't think that run was much different to what we've seen, just even. Um, probably never threatened to win yesterday, but he's got four runs into him now. I know the winner, you had a, I just had a look at a bit of the form of the horses in front of him, and they've been going around for a little while. They've toughened, seasoned, been 28, 3,000, 3,600. So whether it's just a run short of them and that might have told. Well, I think Pat said he would have been preferred over 2,500, but there was no race for him. So oh. he put him in the 3,100, probably unlucky to get a heavy 10 or 12 or whatever it was. But look, his run was okay. He's pulled up sound. So, you know, he's done a good job without winning. But, you know, I think next start, wherever he takes him, if maybe if it's a seven or, you know, it's, 2,500 or something, yeah. he's going to be, you know, when he's great, he's going to be hard to beat. Yep, no, I agree. Um, the final race today, we've seen Captain Harry, and, uh, yeah, he just basically didn't want to go. Finished 48. I, a, I can't remember seeing a horse that we've had that's just honest and consistent, raced so well, and then all of a sudden it's just, he Dropped woke up on. one morning and said, I don't want to do this anymore, and his last three runs have been terrible, so... Yeah. Um, I see you got a steward's embargo on him yesterday for poor performance. Um, I think Mitch is scratching his head. I think he's had him down the beach and tried to freshen him up. And, um, you know, the horse... To, you know, it's my view only, but, you know, I kind of think the horse has probably done his job and he's probably done. Yeah. And he, he needs to either be retired or moved on. So we're talking to the owners about their options now, so... We'll sort that out in the next few days. But uh, to my mind, I think he's definitely past his best. Yeah, and if we're talking about a retired horse, he almost earned 200000 as a ATB homebred, obviously, along with Bungan Street Thoroughbreds, uh, five or six wins. So uh, he paid his way. But, yeah, you're right, it's dramatic. I think four starts ago, we're beating ahead at Sandown and now we're running tailed off at Warrnambool. So, yeah, he's, just, he's just checked out, mentally checked out by the looks of things. He's locked down, Darren. He's in lockdown himself. Just don't know what's going on there. But, no, it's unusual for a horse just to go from being so honest and well and just to go on terrible. So, whether there's something inside that's hurting him that yeah. we can't find or he's just mentally had enough, I don't know. But some of the comments from Johnny Allen yesterday saying that, you know, he just gave him the feel that he didn't want to do it and he didn't yeah. want to jump it starting to sort of throw up a few alarm bells in my mind. And yeah. we're not in the business of hurting or racing horses that are not happy. So, no, that's it. You know, I think it's time to, time to pull up stumps there. Yep. So that's our runners, Darren. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six. A couple of thirds. Collectible two ready. Retired. Two retired. Collectible ready to win. And I Maybe retired. You can say the same about Penthouse Playboy. He's not far off um, winning in the right race as well. Yeah. Upcoming runners. No, I see you've got your money on for tomorrow. Um, no, you must have beat me to the Ladbroke site. 
225. We're obviously talking about South Pacific. Race one. Over three, 350 open. Oh, I, I didn't see the opening odds, so there you go. 350. I know that one of Mars got scratched and that shortened him up, but yeah. there's only seven runners at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, gee, I thought a few might have got burnt last time when he was backed off the map, but I uh, see your mates that get on have obviously got the info off you and they've made him better the day. <laughs> we don't commission coming my way. I think <laughs> the fact he's had two runs in Australia now, I, I, it's a drop back from 28, but um, he's going to be fitter. Ollie probably knows him a little bit better now. Um, first up, obviously, we 2000, it was just to sit on and get a feel. And I think Ollie might have understood now that you've probably got to be, say, into him, but you've just got to be aware and get him rolling, probably to use his um, asset, which is he can stay all day. So I think he'd be, into the, he'd be in the race from the top of the home turn, I would say. Well, last time we got caught out because there was a lack of pace. And, um, you know, he just had too much to do late, didn't he? Um, when they sh when they quickened, he didn't seem to be able to quicken. And he, I think he got a check as well. Yeah. Now, these European horses are not used to, one, copping checks. Yeah. <laughs> and two, um, sort of sit sprints. They don't know how to yeah. pick up. They build their momentum. So he's got to learn to race our way. Yeah. Well, I won't be taking the $2.10, Pete. <laughs> I'll be uh, sitting back watching. Um I noticed race one early in the day, and obviously, um, if there's anyone left in our tipping comp with a first name starting with S, I guess they're all going to be on South Pacific. We've got four of them, Darren. Four with S is still four. remaining. We should bar them from tipping South Pacific. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a point. Can't tip ATV horses. Yeah, well, it's probably a good thing they don't. <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> that's it. But no, I think, look, he gets his chance tomorrow, and if he's going to be a player in the spring, he, he really does need to be winning this race. Yeah, yeah, fair comment. Um, later in the day, we have Mr. Moneybags kicking off. Now, he's had a um, an enforced layoff because of injury. Um, I had a couple of trials with typical of Cranburn. They've been on bog hoops, so we haven't really got a lot out of him. I suppose you could nearly class this as a race day trial, Darren, over 1,000 metres for him. Well, he needs a good, strong gallop on a good surface, Pete. Um, as you say, he's been swimming around uh, Cranbourne for the last couple of months. Um, yep. but I reckon they had a dry July. Well, I'd hate to see what Cranbourne's going to look like if we have a wet <laughs> August. But uh, no, he does need, he needs his head out. Um, I don't think he's ever won first up um, no. in his four goes. So it's a thousand metres, which down the Strait of Flemington is probably like 1100, but Got a good strong rider on Craig Newitt. He's sound as a bell. Um, he's been in work a while. He's probably he's probably going to be ready third up, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, but we just want to see him come to go to the races, sort of show us something, and more importantly, pull up well and sound and happy and you know with improvement to come. So we're not expecting much tomorrow, but we're just hopeful that um, you know he doesn't. Um, that he comes out of the race really well. He did run a, a slashing race down the straight first up. Oh, I'll be going back two springs now. Uh, that was over 1,100. And I think he was um, was off more of a freshen than a, a long layoff. So anyway. It'd be interesting. They run pretty, they run pretty quick time there over the 1,000 at Flemington. Yeah. So they sort said, of get along a bit. So he'll probably get... I would think he'll be he'll travel with them, and when they quicken, he'll be yeah. he'll be left a bit. And um, at least if he does uh, knew it'll be able to get everything he wants into the horse fitness wise. So he should get a pretty and he'll be able to give us a good run. report afterwards. Yep, very good. He's in great form since he's come back to Victoria, Craig. Yeah, absolutely flying, and now back permanently too. I think, and he's he yeah, come yeah. over for the lockdown when Tassie were out and went back, and now he's back here permanently. So. Um, oh, he's probably happy to pick up five grand for riding a winner versus 500 in Tassie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And around on their dirt bag tracks they've got over there, synthetic tracks. And yeah, anyway, um, it'd be good to see Mr. Moneybags back. And I had a track he likes as well, favourite track, Flemington. Yeah, no, it's a good move to kick him off. Yeah, Sunday, no, I think there's Benny Gar casting him. We've got no runners. Monday, packing him, synthetic. Uh, two, oh, well, Potentially two runners. We've got Urgent 
having her first start in a Phillies and Mares maiden over 1,200, Jake Noonan on. Um, her trials have been improving, but I'm not too sure where she sits in the scheme of uh, Monday and how well she'll go. Well, it's always a bit of an unknown first up on the synthetic, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the key. You, you, they can run ordinary and think, oh, what's going on? But then, you know, they may prefer the turf. I think we've had a couple of examples. Murals is one at the moment. Um, yeah, I know she works well at the hill track at Ballarat. And I think the idea is Archie's given her a day out. Like, he's taken yeah. her all the way down to Pakenham. And we're going to try and work, um, work her into a win there. So... Yeah. yeah, she's kicking off the career and we just got to see how she goes. And she got a nice gate to sort of, you know, posse up. And not, you, you hate it when you go there and you've got barrier 10 or 11 and you know you've got to do work one stage, but at least with, at some stage, at least with four or five, she can lob where she's comfortable and then, uh, you know, give her the home straight to run on if that's the way it's going to work. Well, it's interesting and it's good to, it's good to get to the races finally, so... I think we just got to go there with an open mind and, and just see how she goes. Obviously, we haven't got Archie's um, pre-race yet, so we're yeah. not really 100% sure, you know, after looking at the field, um, what he's thinking. But I know it's going to be very wet in Victoria over the weekend next week, so probably going to the synthetics yeah, probably a good thing because I think all the other grass tracks will be heavy. So, yep. you know, we're expecting up to two inches of rain. So, you know, just get to the races, tick her off and have a look. Rotora is um, in a bit later on that day in a benchmark 58 over a mile. Knew it on, but he's third emergency, so... Uh, what distance is that, Pete? Mile, 1,600. Well, so, that's what he's looking for. Yeah, and the, I know they can run on at times at Pakenham. It would have been, well, it still could be um, a good race for him. He was good at a Chuka with New it on. Um, just let's hope there's a couple of scratchings and we can get a look at him again. Well, normally on a Monday you get one or two, but yeah. anyway, look, if he gets a run, he just needs to run to that form he showed the other day. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if he's got him nominated anywhere else if he doesn't get a start, but he's going to be on heavy tracks on the grass anyway. So yeah. let's hope he gets in and hopefully he runs well, but he's he's probably just got to prove to us that he's um, going to be a consistent racehorse. Yeah, yeah for sure. So for there's a couple of dual noms across the weekend and we do get those scratchings. Um, Tuesday, I think it's Ballarat Synthetic. We've got nothing there. And then Wednesday, we've got Connery nominated um, for an 1,800 metre benchmark 70. And it, um, he's had a little freshen up. But that looks like a, a nice race for him without knowing what the full field's going to be. Well, he loves the wet, doesn't he? Loves sand down. Um, yeah, loves just, wet tracks. I think he's been down the beach for a few weeks. Yeah, yep. So, um, and he's always sure. honest, Pete. He's, he's always honest in his runs, isn't he? He's always thereabouts. Yeah, and he's got to just get that little bit of weight relief too. I'm not, I'm not sure who's going to ride, but generally when he just gets a smidgen down in the weights, that's when he, he performs at his yeah. best. And, well, he's not a big, robust horse, so he does no. need a bit of weight relief. So, yep. but he's, you know, he's a horse you can take on trust. He's, you know, he's an honest conveyance and um, it's just a question of where he draws, who's in it and how wet it is. Yep. So that's it. Just on others, obviously, murals, minatory, serious deal. They're sort of three that may uh, race later in that, probably next week. Yeah. They'll be we're looking for runs for them. Um, We've seen a few noms come through. Yep. Oh, I haven't seen any today, but I did see some for, obviously, Rader and that, but not for those. Serious, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so that covers them all. And Mel Mooney was nominated for tomorrow night in the, I don't know where it was, Slingo Oaks or something, but she didn't yeah. accept, so it must be going to wait a little bit longer for her um, in Ireland. But um, anyway, yep. who's your, well, obviously South Pacific's going to end up starting even money and yeah, out of the looks... next best out of that lot, you'd probably think maybe Connery on an each way basis, but the rest you'd be just happy to watch. Yeah, no, I think so. Connery, you know, if Ryder gets a run and he can match his Achuka run, he's obviously, I don't think he's been on the synthetic, but he obviously was better Brave last night. What's that? Yeah. Great man to back in. Yeah, no, I think all the eggs in the one basket there, Darren, South Pacific. Well, the owners will be on tender hooks. That I've said that. <laughs> anyway, 
All right. Well, on. let's move on to let's move on to this lockdown knockout blowout competition. Yep. It started we off at one hundred and forty, Pete. One hundred and forty-one. I think we're back to thirty odd um, to tip the first winner. Then you you threw in the um, exemption rule, which brought another thirty-five or six back into play. I think we. Did it yeah, yep. I think the letters, I can't remember the letters now, but there were seven or eight that never had a winner, so they were brought back into play. So we had roughly 70. Um, the wash-up is we're back to 13. 13. 13. Eight of those have actually tipped a winner in each of the two weeks. Oh, good on them. Uh, another chap, Mick Elder, got, uh, he had a late scratching, so we've rolled him into this week. And three people that were given exemption, exemptions actually found a winner last week. Leo Meat, Lisa Armstrong and Les McDowell. So they've uh, they drew the lucky card and, and took it with both hands. Just write those num- names down, Pete, because I'll be expecting a free beer when I get back to the races off there. <laughs> it's probably going to be next year, the way things are looking. You got 12. You got the ones that actually went through and have tipped two winners are Michael Hall, Bev, Bev Skidmore, Sue Idle, Karen Cohen, Mark Howley, Steve Munro, Sarah Guthrie, and Simon Vaughan. So we actually have five letters in play. Five letters for this week. Yeah, B and K have one each. L has three. M has three. I should be right. No, it doesn't. Uh, I'll flick these through right. him afterwards. And S has four. The South Pacifics have four. Right now. So, um, well, those yeah. um, thirteen, those thirteen that are playing, Pete. Um, maybe we can just shoot an email out at yep. eleven o'clock tomorrow, just with those thirteen names and what yep. horses they've tipped. Oh, I'm with you to um, to everyone to have a look at. Yep. Just I'll, so that uh, we can all follow them with interest. I might even do a pre. This afternoon. We don't have to worry about um, everyone that's playing the total comp, but no. I think there'd be a bit of interest in those 13 just to follow them through the day to see how they go. What, what's your... Well, we'll probably get down to, what, four or five? Well, we obviously want at least four, Darren, if they Do tip we? South Pacific. <laughs> we want at least four. Well, we've got a few S's, have we? I actually haven't had a good look, but generally, you know, uh, I would say K. I wouldn't expect too many K's. But B L M S. You would expect a few horses starting with those letters. So well, I've got a few chances. I wonder if I anyone will tip South Pacific. What you want is a lot for them to pick from, and then they muck up, pick the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> what if they all go? Well, out? I think yeah. Well, anyway, well, let's. We better have a rule here. No new rules. That, but what if they all go out? What if they all go out? Yeah. I win. You win. The house wins. You go, house <laughs> wins. House rules, house wins. Well, we'll cross yeah. that bridge when we get to it. Well, good luck to the 13. And, uh, yeah, if we get that note out in the morning and they have a look and we can follow them and cross yep. them off as they get defeated. Get defeated. Yeah. Um, I think we had a birthday during the week, didn't we? One of our trainers? Yeah, who was yeah, that? Way? Little bloke. Oh, Robbie Griffiths. Turned 61. He looks well for 61. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Happy birthday, Griffiths. Him and Alan Brown. Him and Alan Brown share the same birth date. Brownie's birthday as well. The Brownie same might day, be so close. Was, he might be closer to 61. <laughs> I was trying to... I, I wasn't sure who was the eldest. <laughs> <laughs> the mayor of Alice Springs might have it, have it. Yeah, and the mayor of Alice Springs and the... The crime boss of Cranbourne. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of up north, another Darwin carnival come and gone, this time with um, a little bit less crowd. But I see they still had quite a few there. Yeah, what they say? They had five or 6,000, I think. Allowed, yeah, the government allowed X amount. So. Well, they had a few sad owners on Sunday, Monday, just with Darwin withdrawals. Yeah. Um, Pushing Noah there. So there was a few blokes up at Dunstown, might have a surname, Leonard. Ah, right. Um, eh? Doing it pretty tough. Doing it pretty tough. Had a horse in the Darwin Cup, actually, Pete. Mm. Um, he was 150 to 1 and uh, came out, I think he should have been at the Rodeo on the Friday night. Came oh, out the gates, buck jumping, oh, safety dance. He might have been so, happy uh, with the weather up there. 
after watching that, well, I was glad I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it was um, it was won by that Group 1 winning Grey. Gee, uh, what a magnificent horse. Ten-year-old, yep. won back-to-back cups. Wouldn't you love to have a ten-year-old gelding still running around uh, winning, you know, Darwin Cups oh. at ten years of age? What a, the... what a fantastic horse. Yeah, I went back through his form, not knowing a lot about him. He had form around Black Art Bard. He won the Kingston Town Classic in Perth. So, and, and you know, I think it's his eighth racing season. So he's been a ripper. Yeah, uh, and Fred Kersley yeah. originally. Yeah. Yep. So uh, well done. Animal, so. All right, That's... and uh, how are we going in our other competition, Pete? What's happening there with the overall comp? Have we got many people that have tipped two winners in two weeks? Uh, obviously, all we've got eight. Eight have got two. And there was a few that bombed out first week that tipped winners last week. So, obviously, if the longer the lockout knockout part goes, those people are going to get a nice lead. But if they all yeah. bomb out this week, she's um, open house again, I'd say. Yeah, we got a few on six. We got a few on six. A few on. So I suppose uh, at the end of the day, once the knockout's done, yeah, then it we'll becomes. We'll have to group those leaders together and then do another sort of yeah tip yeah. off. But I've got them all. Tip off or tip out? Tip out. I think. I think we said something about the end of August or around about. So that'll. And sort I know you're out. enjoying. Um, I know you're enjoying doing all the analysis and putting it all together. <laughs> Although I've the first week, first week was hard. First week was hard. Last week. You had a few hours. How long does it take? How many hours do you think it takes to just summarise it and then report on it afterwards? Just depends what time I get out of bed on uh, Sunday morning. Um, no, it was a few hours. It's probably probably two or three hours just putting them on the sheet. Yeah. The you correct, to review the scores? Well, the correcting is not... If I, the best way to do the correcting is actually just leave it until later in the day rather than do it as yeah. you go. And then you just... Do Melbourne do yeah? No, nah, it's all right. It's probably it's probably probably so four or five hours away. Yeah, it would be on the Saturday four or five hours, and then then you got late entries and people wanting to change the rules and not happy with the rules and people wanting to do you this. And that. <laughs> well, this yeah, some I didn't answer. Some Anybody, I did. uh, tip tip a horse. Anyone tip a horse that didn't start with the same letter as their Christian name this week? No, nah, Gary Crow got it right this week, but he didn't tip the winner, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, no, we have, we've had, uh, uh, all good. We've had a couple of suggestions on, uh, I did have a suggestion why the, we had that rule brought in, but that bloke had made the suggestion actually tipped the winner and he's still in the comp. Did he? Yes. Who was that, Pete? Simon Vaughan. <laughs> Simon. Yeah. Uh, good. <laughs> But uh, no, no, look, what, it's you been got, well received. You got, you got, you got, you got your head, have you? No, I'm scratching. Marley said I'm bald. I'm just checking to see if there's any hair. Uh, I haven't got much more, Darren. I'm just noticing we have a time. I think we'll wrap it up. We noticed it. We're Hopefully, noticed. next week, Pete. BT, I Next week, you? we might have a foal. Yeah, yeah. BT, so, that looks like ATB to me. Does it? Reese is ATB to me. But he hated me. Um, a chocolicious, chocolicious file, Darren. Should file next week, Pete. So hopefully we'll have a photo next week. You'll be nearly wishing it'd go back into lockdown inside its mother if it comes out with this weather. Well, I'm glad I have, I'm glad we haven't had any files. We've got yeah, she's the first one due next week. One more in August, and then about ten or twelve in September, and then they start rolling along. But. Oh, no, it's all uh, about to happen, Pete. We, we're calling it the calm before the storm. <laughs> and what's the, who's the sire? Who's the stallion? Uh, this will be a deep field. Deep field. Chocolate is having a deep field. And Savva Babes having a Dandino. I, oh, very good. I just was reading Black Caviar's going to Written Tycoon this year. Oh, right, eh? Hmm. What's your oh, thoughts there? Need... Oh, well... He's a, you know, he can get a very good horse and he can get a very average horse like most stands. So, so a couple. I don't think her first two foals have set the world on fire yet. So no. I suppose they've got to keep searching until they find the right click. Yep. Anyway, I just read that. Um, yeah, that's very exciting, Pete. Yeah, no, I was trying to bring something else into play. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't have too well, much. I think we just leave it there, mate. I think we're just going to wrap it up. Um, it's freezing cold. We're in lockdown. Uh, there's not much going on. The longer this goes, the less time I have to spend outside uh, cleaning the gutters out on the shed, which I'm about yeah. to go and do. Good fun. And that'll be the highlight of my day. I'm just checking to make sure I hit record, Darren. Otherwise, we yeah, have I to take two. The record button go. <laughs> anyway, it's different. Now, are we looking at uh, maybe bringing a special yeah. guest next week? We might split this screen into three and oh, I don't know if I'll give it away, but we're trying to get hold of Pat Ryan as a... Yeah, well, no one knows who Pat Ryan is. Yeah, so Pat would be... I wonder if uh, he's got a computer. <laughs> well, he's got a phone that doesn't work real well. I know that. He hasn't got a website. Uh, I think he'll have a laptop. Anyway, uh, we'll work something out. It'd be good if we can have we'll Pat get a, Ryan. Try and get a trainer on next week yeah, for a little look, segment, eh? If it's not, Pat, maybe we'll it could be Mac or well, maybe, someone. Well, maybe if uh, South Pacific wins, we might get hold of uh, David Eustace or yeah, Dave Connor out in the wind. Get Archie Alexander. Well, maybe we'll play yeah, it we'll see. Yep, that nah, sounds yeah, we'll good. See. We might. Maybe we can punish a trainer by training us a winner. We'll get him on this. <laughs> get him on and give him a uh, the lay down it. the law. Lay down the law. Yeah. No, no, we'll have Ask someone some on. Yeah, we'll have someone on for sure. All right, mate. All right. Well, that's the end of ATB. What a interesting concept this Zoom is. Who would have thought we'd be mucking around with Zoom, Darren? I know, we're just so advanced, Pete. Thank God we've got the co-producer in the back background here in Jonah. <laughs> Beck yeah. last night setting it up because I had no idea. <laughs> now that I'm well. It's a simple, well, uh, innovative thing. I was pretty excited that I was able to log on so easily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's all good. All right, well, until next week, I'm Darren Dance with Pete Morgani. Tune in next week. We'll have a special guest, and we might even make it go live on Facebook if we can figure that bit out. Jesus, now you're getting technical. Cheers, everyone. All the best to the owners, all the best to the owners with runners. Cheers. <laughs>